Hey, it's Jeffrey Gurian here for Comedy Matters TV, and I'm here in New York City at the Paramount Hotel with legendary pop star and crossover artist Gino Vanelli. How are you, Gino? Good to meet you, Jeffrey. Yeah, it's really good to meet you, too, because we're going to be doing this very special event together, November 22nd, uh, in Fairfield, Connecticut. Yeah, at the Warehouse in Fairfield, Connecticut, yes. And uh, first, I just want to say I saw you perform last night at the Iridium. The show was great. Really, your fans were out and in force, and they love you. Yes, yeah. isn't that isn't that such a rewarding feeling? It, it it is, but for me, no matter what, I just do what I do, and and whatever comes comes. It's it's all fine with me. Well, I have to say that not only was your voice excellent, but I was very impressed with your stage presence. Not everybody has that, and you have a very a very special way of connecting to your audience, and they really appreciate it. You're a really good storyteller. <laughs> well, it, it, it comes from, you know, experience and, and going through stuff. And uh, also, I, I think what really helped me uh, was I, I used to more or less, in the 70s and 80s, hide behind my music. My music, I thought, was enough. And then when I left, and I lived in the Netherlands for a little while, and I performed a lot just with piano and voice, I mean, duo performances, I learned to, to really um, to entertain an audience you know, for 90 minutes with just a piano player. And so you really got to think fast on your feet and tell a lot of stories. So I, I got my chops up that way. And the time goes so fast, too. I mean, you didn't, do a, you didn't take an intermission. You just went right through. Two hours. And yeah, two hours, like straight, and with, uh, including an encore, which was really nice that you did that. Yeah. And, People loved it when you did the stuff from the 70s and 80s. It's hard to believe that that's like almost 50 years ago, right? It is incredible. I mean, I, as I said to the audience, you know, it was almost 50 years ago that I moved to New York when I was 18 years old, um, looking for a record deal and all. And it's hard, you know, I passed by the hotel that I stayed at in, in 1970, 71, and um, hard to believe all this time has gone by. But, you know, it, it really does go buy faster, you know, when you're having a good time. So they say, and I, <laughs> I agree, and we still have our hair, <laughs> which not a lot of people can say, right? <laughs> well, well, there are remedies for that. <laughs> that in itself is a great accomplishment. So we're doing this event for Donnie uh, Yance for the Maderi Foundation. Can you talk a little bit about your connection to wellness and spirituality? Because that's what this is really about. Uh, raising money for the foundation and for the work that he does. First of all, Donnie Yance and Jen Yance are very, very, very special souls. Um, you know, very, very giving, warm human beings, uh, very knowledgeable. But even more importantly than that, because I know a lot of great, beautiful people, um, Donnie really knows what he's doing. He really understands you know, herbs you know, herbology and all that, and how it's interconnected with mainstream medicine, you know, how they affect one another. I mean, my wife is going through something that, you know, that, um, she was diagnosed with, with cancer, liver cancer, and uh, um, Donnie has been very instrumental, you know, in guiding her through all this as she's going through mainstream care. So using them both is, is really powerful, but with, with, without Donnie and, and Jen, who's done so, so much research, I mean, we'd sort of be lost. Yeah, he's, he's a fund of knowledge when it comes to that. Most physicians, unfortunately, don't come close. Their training is not such that they're aware of, of herbs and things like that. Well, his but retention is, is just is just amazing. And, and, and his retention of, of what does what to what and how and when and, and how many times you should take it. and whatever you know just when i came over here two three days ago i started feeling whoa i went through we did uh, san diego and, and los angeles long flight here did some promotion i started to get a bad cold a bad sore throat donnie just sent me some of his throat and gland spray and i just kept spraying every hour and, and the vocals were fine you know yeah, it's amazing i'm going through something myself and it, uh, it's interesting because when we met when i met the answers. It was through my comedy work, and I happened to have a problem with my heart. And yeah, it came out of nowhere. I've always been healthy. I never had a problem before. Out of nowhere, they say that my mitral valve is torn and I'm facing surgery. Wow. And I, I just came back from Japan.
two days ago, or like last night. And fortunately, I have no symptoms, but Donnie is putting me on a regimen to strengthen my heart. My cardiologists don't know anything about the protocol that he gave me. They're like, they're, they're worried about certain things, but he said to trust him because he's so familiar with this, and I do. And I do, so I'm gonna be following his uh, regimen, and it's good to see that he's working with you and that he's doing so well with your wife. The thing, the thing about Donnie is that because of his um, Franciscan background, he's a secular brother, you know, um, he knows no end to his commitment. It's not like, well, my time is up and, and you've got your 15 minutes. To, to him, it's just until it's right. And that's his background. And, and that's because he's a true, true healer. But more than even a healer, he's a believer. He's authentic. And so talk to me a, l a little bit about uh, your spiritual connection. Because that's a very big part of this. You know, we always, uh, I'm very involved in alternative medicine through my own background. And we always talk about a body-mind-spirit approach to things. Donnie switches it and talks about a spirit-body-mind approach. And I have the feeling that you're on the same path. So could you talk a little bit about that? I don't wear it like a badge. I don't like to wear spirituality like a badge because a lot of people wear spirituality like a badge because I, I, I like the practical approach to life knowing that spirit is all behind it because a spirit likes to work in the practical world. And if spirit would just like to be spirit, this would be a totally a woo-woo world. It really wouldn't be what it is. So obviously spirit wants to be real, wants to be physical, wants to live in this dimension. And so let's deal with this dimension. And um, I, don't, I don't really like uh, healers and people that profess spirituality uh, first. I like healers who understand what they're dealing with. And, and have the background of spirituality because that's their commitment. That's their authenticity. But all those who use it as a pretext for healing, to me, end up being not only bad healers, but I, I, flimsy people. Because I've dealt with them all. I mean, I, I had some serious issues in the, in the 80s, that, which led me to Peru and many, many, many monasteries in Japan and all over the world. John of God. Oh, I mean, it, it, it was really the, you know, the dark night of the soul searching. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten everything from, from walking over hot coals to exorcisms. <laughs> and um, it, it, most of it's really just bull. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really all mine. If you believe it, you'll, you'll have a placebo effect and all that kind of stuff. What I really was looking for some, is for someone to really have the spiritual background and the sense, the sense of commitment, the sense of understanding there's something deeper behind all this. But let us deal with what we have at hand. And these are the tools that our dear Creator gave us. Let us find out what these tools are. And this is what I, I, I think is very special about Donnie. That's a great perspective. Uh, the reason that I talk about spirituality is because I like to draw the distinction between spirituality and religion because a lot of people confuse the two. And religion can be wonderful for people, but it tends to divide us by putting us into a category and other people are automatically outside of it. And all spirituality asks is that you believe in a force greater than yourself, something that's guiding your life. Because if you think that it's up to you to guide your life, then you tend to blame yourself for things. When, when you think that things went wrong, when things didn't go your way, and it's important to understand that you're, you're on a path. Not everything goes your way, and it's not because you're being punished. It's because you're supposed to have something better than that. And if you thought you were... If you thought you were supposed to get the thing you wanted, you wouldn't be available for the really good thing that's coming to you. So there are certain spiritual principles that are important to incorporate when dealing with people who are depressed. Because a lot of people who are ill often are depressed. And it's understandable that there's a connection. So there's an important need to understand spirituality in terms of getting better. And that's why I bring that up. And for Donnie, it seems very important. He doesn't put it out in the forefront, but it's part of what he does. And I think it's very important in terms of helping people to heal, when you, especially his work with cancer patients. You know, mood is so important with that and, and having some connection to, to something besides yourself. 
you know? Well, one of the biggest problems, you know, that our society, and it's really been that way since the beginning of time, is humans face the real problem called either self-absorption or narcissism. You remember the, and it, it's a wonderful life, when George Bailey thinks that his, you know, life is over and he's going to throw himself off the bridge. Mm -hmm. How does he heal himself? Remind me. He saves someone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the only way he gets out of his own way. Because he gives himself to someone else mm -hmm. or to a purpose. So the angel, is, instead of trying to perform some magic or voodoo on him, saying, you'll be fine, you'll be fine, he just jumps in the damn river and says, help! And George Bailey, it brings something out of him that he didn't know that he had, that he just, he would give his life for another. And that is a very, very important aspect. So usually we're in our own way. That's basically it. And it's ego. It's ego, right? Well, ego is a very, very strange word. We all need ego to operate on this world. Your ego is nothing more than a concept of yourself. Some smaller, some bigger, some more fragile, some solid. Without ego, you're, in, you're, you're infinity. So you need to be an ego or an individual. Now, people use the word ego in a positive way or negative way. When you say he's got too much ego or he's got a healthy ego, right? Mm -hmm. Difference. You said so many things that are meaningful to me. Um, but when you talked about the George Bailey thing, what you're talking about also is service, doing service. Gratitude and service are two really key things in terms of healing, being grateful for the things that you do have, and doing service to other people. It takes you out of yourself. So when I was talking about ego, we tend to think about ourselves, you know? There's a saying, I don't think much about myself, but all I do is think about myself, you know? <laughs> it's yeah. like... Also, make sure there's a difference between true service and altruism. Altruism doesn't work. Altruism is the duty. Someone telling you, you must. Again, it's a moral imperative. And then you feel some resentment. Altruism, throw it out the window. Find something or a purpose that you connect to or a person whether it be, you know, rescuing dogs, whether it be the lady next door that needs, you know, to be helped to go to the bathroom. Find something that's truly real. Because altruism is an, an, another rock concert for, for some purpose that we never know where the money goes to. So to me, it's a big broad stroke. And, and people like Stalin and, and, and Vladimir Lenin used altruism. It's meaningless. What really means something is pick a purpose. A small purpose and even if there's no reward for you and there's no glory and no one says thank you you do it because you know it's the right thing to do your philosophies are so well thought out I can see why Donnie chose you to headline this event could you talk about how you first met the answers and your connection to them the answers would come to a few concerts and they'd be standing in line with I usually love to to meet the audience, you know, after sign autographs, have a, you know, short chat. Yeah, so last night you were very gracious. People were looking forward to meeting you. Yes, and I like doing that because I, I like to hear people's stories and so on and so forth. And the Yances uh, stood in line a few times at a few concerts. And um, Jen always tried to, you know, introduce me to Donnie as being this special person. And I'd say, yeah, yeah, I know, I know we're all special. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Until uh, I think it was two years ago at the Saban Theater, where Jen comes with this, you know, 10,000 pound book called Adaptogens <laughs> and lays it on me and says, we want you to read this. I go, oh my God, another 10 pounds on my suitcase, another 50 bucks. <laughs> I use that book when I can't get to the gym. Right. So I just dumped it in the, in the dressing room, finished my meet and greet and all that, and, um, and said goodbye, and Donnie and Jen were starting to make their way home. And I just went back to my small dressing room at the time, and uh, they changed it since. And I just flipped through the adaptogens, and I went, holy moly, this is the real thing. This guy really knows what he talked about, was talking about. So I said, Jen, Don, wait, wait a minute. You know, please, please come back. And so we just started talking about the book, thumb, thumbing through it. I looked at Don, I says, you're the real deal. You, you really know what you're saying. You really understand this. Because I've looked into this for, for years. 
I don't know what you know, but I know enough to know that you know. <laughs> And then, then we, we really struck up a very deep relationship. It's a broad relationship. It's a humorous one because Don, Donnie loves comedy, he tells me so many, you know, Franciscan dirty jokes. <laughs> and um, he's a musician too. He loves music, loves jazz, Coltrane and the Bunch. And Donnie likes what I do. And Jen and my wife have become very, very, very close friends. He has a very eclectic background. The two of them are very lovely people. And I'm, uh, I'm so looking forward to doing this event. I think it's going to be fantastic. It is because, you know, the Bandari Foundation is truly cutting edge. You know, um, I'll give you one example. My, my wife, um, they finally found three tumors in her liver. And there was another tumor that is in her mesentery that really caused all this. So um, we've got the best liver surgeon and liver uh, oncologist and all in, in, in Portland, Oregon, in the Northwest. But they have a way of doing things, you know. They, they, they've been bred, in a sense, trained to do it one way. Of course, Donnie's got the alternative method, but a very, very, very particular and very schooled alternative method. And so we decided, look, let's, let's do the two. Donnie, are you gonna, can you help us? And Donnie and Jen said yes. Now, there have been arguments between the mainstream doctors, and being a doctor, you should well know this, mm -hmm. and alt alternative. Mm -hmm. And they kind of poo-poo alternative, yes, right? Absolutely. So Donnie, they didn't want to talk to Donnie, because Donnie said, make sure they get this, the chromogranids test, this, this, that test, that test. And they said, bull crap, we don't need those tests. Donnie says, no, you need those tests. Mm -hmm. So they were not going to accommodate us until Donnie says, "Have I'm going to get, I can't remember his name, this doctor from the Mayo Clinic or the Cleveland Clinic, call doctor, my doctor here, you know, in, in Portland. And sure enough, that doctor called uh, the doctor in the Northwest and he was on it. So Donnie's got some really key fans in mainstream medicine that really know what he does mm -hmm. and that's a terrific advantage. You know, there are a few doctors that will open their minds to it. I, I had that problem myself. Uh, my dad uh, suffered with diabetes, the kind that was like cancer. It affected every area of his body and they wanted to amputate his leg. And I started doing healing work on him, energy work, uh, for a couple of weeks before and through some miracle the circulation came back in his leg and they were able to save his leg. They just had to remove his little toe. And the surgeon said to me, I can't explain why that happened, why the circulation came back. My father said to him, my son's been doing healing work on me and he wasn't open to it. I asked him if he would co-author an article with me about the results of that and he said he can't because he doesn't believe in it. He said, I'll give you a letter stating that the circulation came back and I don't know why, but I don't feel comfortable working with that. So you're facing that kind of thing all the time. You ask your doctor next time though, huh? Because all doctors attest to the placebo effect. It's usually 30 to 40 percent of the times, right? Mm -hmm. Ask him to explain you what a placebo effect is. And there you go. Yeah. It's, it's the mind believing that it can be done. You know, one of the, you, know, you know who Ernest Holmes is? I don't. Please tell me. Ernest Holmes wrote The Science of Mind in 1918. Mm -hmm. He has a whole lecture, I think it was given in 1952, the year I was born, on one quote in the Bible, and this is very important, when Jesus says, it is done unto you as you believe. Ponder that. That is the whole spectrum of faith healing, placebo, the mind believing, someone triggering the mind believing, the whole gamut. Think about it. It is done unto you as you believe. That was said 2,000 years ago. So that explains a lot of what mainstream doctors, which is fine, you know, find it hard to believe, but it does exist. The power of thought is incredible. And I have one last experience to share with you about that, that I cured myself of stuttering. I stuttered very badly in my 20s, into my 20s and 30s and beyond. I stuttered so badly that I couldn't say my name and no speech therapists were able to help me. And I realized one day I didn't stutter when I was alone. I only started trying to talk to somebody else. 
which told me that there was nothing wrong with me. And I worked on myself for years, and through the power of thought, I was able to cure myself. So I, I get what you're saying. It's, it's, there are no limits, really, as to what you can well, create with... The problem with my speech. When I was 16 years old, I, uh, 17 years old, I got my first record contract. Mm -hmm. And I did my first interview uh, on television. And um, I heard myself speak. And I said, oh, my Lord, I have a terrible Montreal <laughs> Italian accent <laughs> talking to you like this, you know. <laughs> and I said, I don't know how the hell I'm going to get rid of that. So someone said, just told me, read the newspaper out loud and keep taping yourself. And I, I did that for a couple of years. <laughs> it's so funny that reading out loud is a very powerful way of stopping yeah. stuttering. To hearing your voice and listening to yourself and learning how to do that. It's one of the techniques that I use to teach people how to stop stuttering. Montreal is a great place, by the way. I'm there every year for the Just for Laughs Festival. Have you ever been? Yes. Just for here. I, I've played the Jazz Festival, yes. Montreal is a very fun city. Yeah, it's an amazing city. I go back every year. It's one of the nicest places that I've ever been. Um, I don't know what else to say except that I'm very excited to do this event with you. I'm honored to be hosting you. You're the main star. Roberta Gambarini is going to be opening for you. She's here. We're going to be talking to her in a little while. But is there anything that you'd like to add before we uh, wrap up? Oh, well, I don't know. You know, there's so much to say about all, all this, this healing stuff, you know, that has so much to do with our perspective on life, uh, how we think day to day, um, how we sleep, how we eat, who the, who the people we associate with, what programs we watch, what we, what we fill our minds with. I mean, it, it, it's, it's more than a lifestyle, it's a life commitment. Mm -hmm. And um, all I could say is that music uh, for me has been my way to, I think my way to, to the divine because it's been so difficult to master the, tr the craft mm -hmm. that I had to dig deeper and deeper and deeper. And then I, I found that beyond the mastery of the notes was the mastery of myself. And the only way to master yourself is to know who you really are. And who you really are is connected to something really, really much greater than who you think you are. So that, that's why, the, for me, uh, if I've mastered any part of my craft, it's because I've dug deep enough to find out that there's there's more there's more beyond the notes. I'm so happy to speak to you because you have so many good things to say, and uh, I, I again I can see why Donnie chose you to do this event. You're perfect, absolutely perfect for this event. In closing, I think you know what I want to reach down for this. I think we should say the exact title of the event because it's a long title. It's um, yeah, T yes, Together We Heal, Spirit, Mind, Body, Transforming Healthcare, Changing Lives at the Warehouse at Fairfield Theater coming up on November the 22nd. And people can get tickets, uh, I believe, at the Maderi Foundation uh, website. Yes. Um, will, it also be, uh, uh, will there also be something on your website? What is your website so people can can uh, find out with genov.com and it'll be on my Facebook and we're going to do a special promo special ad you know, you know for this event because I don't want to treat it just like a, a concert mm -hmm. uh, the Madari Foundation I mean I'm personally involved because Donnie and Jen are, have been really personally involved with my wife's health and, and mine you know to a certain extent and um, I, I feel like um, I owe them much more than just a, a promo I, I want to give them share my 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 exact personal thoughts about what they're doing. Well, I thank you so much, and I hope that everyone who's watching this will come out on November 22nd and join us, and prayers for your wife's recovery. Hopefully that everything will go well for her. And uh, it's an honor and a privilege <laughs> to be here with you, and I look forward to November 22nd. Thank you so much. Pleasure. guys, thanks for watching Comedy Matters TV. To check out some of our other videos, click on the boxes on either side of me. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Not just for me, but for my parents.